But, uh, but uh, in any case, we've had a, a rally of around one and a half years. So some correction perhaps is healthy for the market. Well, for now, uh, once again, the market has dipped below 17,000. So it has been a weak start. No two ways about that. Almost a 400-point cut on the Nifty and the Sensex down about 1270 points. Let's discuss some earnings now. Madison Sumi came out with their numbers yesterday. On a year-on-year -year basis, the numbers were below street estimates. But on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, there has been a bit of an improvement this time around. Vivek Chand Segal, the chairman of the Madison Sumi Group, joins us now to talk about that. Mr. Segal, good morning and thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, you know, in your press release, you have mentioned that although the EBITDA uh, margins for SMR, PBV are up 80 basis points quarter on quarter, there are still issues like higher resin prices, escalated freight and wages that are putting pressure on the operational performance. And it's not just for you, it's for the industry as a whole. Do you think that things can get worse on the cost front before it gets better? Uh, well, uh, uh, when you talk about raisins and the oil prices going up, there can be a kind of a, a effect on the raising prices also. But I think uh, uh, by and large, it appears that uh, it's fine. Um, uh, we have uh, now negotiations and uh, talking along with the OEMs to sort the problem out. Even they realize that the effect is quite a lot. So I think uh, within this particular uh, quarter, we would have sorted out I mean, as it happens every year. So the third quarter is always uh, a little bit weaker because they've decided, you know, they have a lot of holidays and all that. So uh, uh, people are uh, not coming to office that much, but now the things are under uh, focus. So uh, I think there'll be marked improvement, hopefully in the coming quarters. Okay, all right. Uh, so morning, Mr. Saigal, Nigel on this side. Uh, so you're telling us that things will improve from year on on the margin front? Quarter four will be better than quarter three? Uh, normally is, and uh, we would have uh, sorted out a lot of the uh, issues. And uh, yeah, uh, by and large, it's our experience that the fourth quarter is better. And how is the situation on the semiconductor shortage front? The last time we spoke to you, you said it would take a couple of more months before things iron out. Uh, how is the situation on the ground now? Well, it's getting better, Sonia, day and day. Uh, but uh, look, what uh, was uh, expected is not really happening. Um, so I think uh, our guess is that by September, October, this might get better, or at least pre-COVID level, they would have get it, uh, get their act together, and uh, the solution might be there. So that's what you said the last time around as well, that by September, October, you expect the semiconductor shortage issue to resolve itself. But, you know, I was just reading from your press release, um, uh, uh, talking specifically about your vertical PKC, you say that it was adversely impacted by elevated costs, including supply chain issues in North America, along with a volume impact in China because of an em emission change impact. Uh, sir, will you continue to report losses in the PKC business on the operational front because of all of these issues? I uh, think it's going to get better. Uh, look, there were some um, uh, changes in uh, emission controls in China. Uh, there were some other challenges in the USA. With the result that their uh, uh, truck uh, population actually was overproduced earlier, and that's why you see a very high uh, performance of PKC in the last year and year. But uh, recently, uh, they had built up a lot of inventory, and those inventories are now moving out. So uh, I think it should get normalized within the next uh, three months or maybe six months at worst. Okay. All right. So that's, that'll be positive as well. Uh, Mr. Segal, I'm not sure whether you'll have this matrix or uh, the number will be handy. But what is the normal content per vehicle, if you'll track that matrix? And has there been an improvement in the past quarter? Uh, look, uh, the uh, raw material prices have been elevated. So it's a very difficult thing to give you an exact number. But vehicle uh, content per car, per vehicle, uh, is generally on the, on, the, on the upside when we take acquisitions and all these particular things in mind. So I think uh, uh, it's a matter of uh, time. Uh, but uh, content per vehicle, just offhand, I can't give you. But uh, it'll be a, it'll be increasing. It's increasing. Okay. 
uh, wanted to understand a little bit about the balance sheet as well. The positive is that this time around your debt has fallen compared to what we saw last quarter. Your net debt is uh, a little over 7,200 crores. Any plans to reduce debt further? And if yes, what are you know the options that you have for deleveraging? So we have a lot of options now with the uh, uh, settlement done between the two companies and uh, uh, the demerger and the merger that's happening. Uh, I think uh, we would be in a position to raise equity if we want to, uh, but that will not happen until we have an acquisition. But uh, I think uh, otherwise we are pretty comfortable uh, where we are on our debt. And all our uh, money that comes in to the EBITDA and all these particular things all go into redu reduction of debt only. So we are very clear on that. Even now it is almost 1.1, 1.2 times our uh, EBITDA. So it's not so bad, it's worrisome for us. You know, Mr. Segal, uh, over the last week or so, we've been focusing on what's going on in Russia, Ukraine as well. Now, you have a fair bit of exposure to uh, the European market itself. If things escalate, uh, would it have an impact on business? So, you know, uh, uh, we are not having anything to do with Ukraine, or we don't have our plants over there. But a uh, lot of our uh, peers and our, our other uh, uh, suppliers have plants in Ukraine. So I do not know if, uh, unfortunate as it is, if it, if it happens, then there could be some stoppages. But... Uh, uh, we are sure that you know common sense will prevail and there's no war like uh, situation over there okay uh, i wanted to understand a little bit about the north american truck market because you have an exposure there and the numbers in the last couple of months indicate that there's no clear visibility on the easing of the supply side shortages in fact act which is the company that gives out the, this data said that oems across north america are taking a very cautious approach to effectively manage the cycle uh, not so much on the supply side front, but more on demand. Are you seeing any slowdown in that pocket along with supply side problems? You know, that's the amazing part of it. The demand is very strong, but there are supply issues as far as North America is concerned. So, uh, yes, we have a robust demand, uh, which is there, but uh, we have supply concerns, we have uh, uh, semiconductor shortages, you name it, we have it. But also, uh, I think it is a matter of time. I think the car makers, uh, the truck makers are uh, getting over this particular uh, uh, problem that they have in a very, very smooth manner. Uh, but yes, it takes time to solve this uh, semiconductor issue. But uh, we are sure that in the coming quarters, it's going to get better and better. Okay. And on the acquisition front, the last time when we spoke, you said that in the next couple of months, you will announce something. Have you closed on anything yet? If yes, you know, with geography, what products are you looking at? Because there's lots happening even on the electric vehicle front now, globally. Yeah, I think we are, we are very close. We have made uh, our, our, our final offers and uh, hopefully we should be giving you good news. Very soon, who knows? <laughs> Acquisition then an equity raise will happen as well. Well, maybe uh, a month max. No, there will be equity uh, that will be raised as well. You had mentioned that there could possibly be some equity no. raising if there's an acquisition. So would this uh, acquisition that you're currently uh, you know, teasing us about that we could hear rather soon, will this require that equity raising? No. Uh -oh. we, we can manage with debt. Do you want to give us a sneak peek into at least the size, what kind of a, uh, you know, value could, uh, could the acquisition be? Rough number, broad range. No, I, I, it's, you guys are very smart. You'll catch up. So that's uh -huh. why I can't give you any news. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> I guess we'll be, we, we will be the first to hear as well, I hope, of the acquisition <laughs> when it comes yeah. through. Uh, Sir, so, you know, just yep, one yep. final, a couple of final questions because, you know, this whole cost pressures that you are facing, it's indicative of, of what's happening across the industry, right? And for your own business as well, I mean, your margins, you would enjoy at one point in time uh, double-digit margins on a consolidated basis now that's come down to about 6, 6.5%. Uh, just trying to understand that would there be more pressure on margins in the months to come until more clarity emerges on the supply side issues? Uh, look, uh, it's a very interesting question. 
Uh, we think that the uh, prices have almost uh, peaked and uh, it's not going to get worse from here. Um, but uh, uh, very difficult to guess these things. But our feeling is that uh, uh, the customers are already aware and the, uh, uh, the negotiations are already on because calendar year is a very important year for every, every autom automaker also. So I think everybody has already gone in their budgeting process. They have already taken into account the kind of increases, et cetera. So it's only a matter of time. Within the uh, next month or so, you will find uh, most of the pricing would have been uh, normalized. And if that's so, then uh, uh, the price of raw material is not increasing, then we have uh, a little bit of a soft uh, uh, situation. I mean, it's not going to get in any way uh, uh, worse than the, where we are, but it's only going to get better. Okay. That's my take on this. Okay. Very quickly, Mr. Segal, you teased us a little bit about that acquisition. How soon do we hear? In this fiscal year, I mean, we just got a month and a half, or do you think uh, sometime in the first quarter of next fiscal? We don't know, <laughs> but hopefully within this month. You're sounding reasonably optimistic. You have given us a fair bit of a hint in terms of the acquisition. It's been good chatting with you, Mr. Segal. Wish you well and looking forward to catching up with you rather soon. For the time being, Thank though, you. we'll have to take into, uh, you know, slip into a short break. Uh, on news that the Nifty did try to fight back, but we're still down now. 420 points as we speak. On the other side of the break, we'll get chatting with Sunita Reddy, MD of Apollo Hospitals. And later on, we'll also be joined by Ajay Patel, CFO of Cummins India. Stay with us.